dear students hope you are going through the journey of cataract with uh, uh, absorbing trying to absorb most of the interesting features on cataract now in this ppt we will concentrate on investigations basically investigations of cataract this itself is a selective list of uh, investigations the questions will be usually to ask you what investigation is done and in that particular investigation what specific is looked for and is there any special investigations for specific cases that kind of questions you need to face in this area so we'll go through before investigation and evaluation of the patient, a complete evaluation of the patient is very important because in the cataract, um, most of the times cataract is picked up in camp settings. People, uh, medical teams go on a camp and people come to the camp for uh, complaints and most of the senile patients have cataract and they are picked up for cataract procedure and they are brought to a base hospital. In the base hospital, a complete evaluation has to be done. First will be like a general physical. We'll have to do a general examination and history taking and general examination. Uh, for example, minute points like other eye, whether it was operated for cataract surgery, whether the other eye is seeing well, whether the patient uh, had any other uh, ocular procedures being done, whether he had any injury in the past. These are uh, small, small, like hypertension, diabetes. These are small, small points which are very essential to uh, evaluate in a cataract setting and the next important thing is visual assessment needless to say you'll have to take a pakka vision vision uh, individually of each eye like right eye first left eye second and uh, once you see the naked eye vision then you'll have to put a pinhole in front of the eye and see whether the patient is improving with pinhole if he is improving with pinhole then it mostly means the cataract is immature and the patient is benefiting from the clear areas in between the cataractus fibers. Clear lens fibers are helping him to see better. So in those settings, even a uh, prescription of glasses, glasses uh, can help, can help for a period of time, like six months or one year, the patient can use a pair of glasses and then come again for cataract surgery. That also can be done. So that decision can be taken after a visual assessment. Uh, visual assessment uh, should be uh, not neglected, should not be neglected in cataract patients. That is the, that is the teaching. Then as we, as we time and again see, even in corneal ulcer, cornea examination, we said first we'll have to look at the lid margin, the tear film and the adnexe before coming and seeing the uh, cornea. Similarly, for cataract also, we have to first see the lids, the conjunctiva and the lacrimal apparatus ascertain whether these have any infection or any any uh, diseases in them and only then come to evaluation of a cataract that kind of that kind of uh, systematic uh, uh, examination is needed because if lids have a blepharitis if lids have a sty then you have to delay the cataract surgery because there is an infectious process going on very close by you cannot operate so first you have to clear that similarly if there is a nasolacrimal duct obstruction and there is a chronic dacryocystitis, you cannot proceed with cataract surgery. You have to first manage the dacryocystitis, then only come for cataract surgery. So uh, these are very small, small things, but very essential things which need to be evaluated before we are proceeding for a detailed uh, cataract surgery procedure in a patient. Pupil examination. This is the next crucial thing. You will have to see whether the pupil is briskly reacting to light and accommodation and compare it with both eyes. The direct and consensual should be very good. And uh, if that is not there, especially this is an important uh, important uh, feature in mature cataract, at least in immature cataracts, patient will have some vision. But in mature cataracts, totally vision will be very poor, like hand movements or lesser than that. And the patient's, uh, uh, there is no way you can see the patient's posterior segment, that is the vitreous and retina integrity, you cannot judge in a retinoscope, in a uh, ophthalmoscopy examination in a mature cataract patient. So in these patients, a good indicator of macular function, whether the macula is healthy and the macula is functioning well for the patient is a very important indicator to prognosticate on these cases. Because if the patient is going to ask you, if the patient's attender, son or daughter or uh, somebody is going to ask you, sir, you are going to operate on this patient, whether after surgery the vision will recover. That is a very important question. This is called prognosis. What is the outcome of the procedure? If you want to judge the outcome of the procedure, then in a mature cataract, it's very difficult because under the mature cataract, patient can have a retinal detachment. Patient can have a, a macular hole. 
patient can have a vitreous hemorrhage, you will not know because of the mature cataract, everything will be hidden. hidden. So in that patient, if you check the pupil, it is a good indicator that though everything is not um, ascertained, at least to an extent, the macula is healthy. To an extent, the macula is healthy. So to see a pupillary reaction, it is very important. To see the pupillary reaction, it is very important. And um, the next important uh, thing which you have to do is like a PAKA anterior segment evaluation. You will have to judge the anterior chamber depth, the nature of the cataract, whether it is an immature cataract, mature cataract, whether there is any subluxation of the cataract, any zonular fibers are given way and there is subluxation of the cataract, whether there is any synechae, whether the pupil is adequately dilating, all these features are very important anti segment evaluation. Next is, um, you will have to check the intraocular pressure. Intraocular pressure is a very important parameter that has to be checked and ascertained in cataract surgery patients. Similarly, you will need to do a keratometry and biometry. You will have to do a K-reading and a scan. You will have to do a K-reading and a scan. That also needs to be done. So this is uh, very important. Then comes fundus examination. Fundus has to be seen pakka in these patients. You cannot, uh, you cannot uh, just like that uh, over, overlook that factor. If it is an immature cataract, dilate well and check a fundus examination. Do a fundus examination. Uh, if the mature cataract is there, if fundus examination cannot be done in a mature cataract, then you have to resort to B scan ultrasound. Here there is A scan ultrasound. Remember, biometry is another word for A scan. We in fact call it as A scan biometry. A scan biometry is done for all patients to do IOL power calculation. B scan is selectively done for mature cataracts, for mature cataracts to see whether the posterior segment is healthy or not. So now you would have understood why even in a cataract surgery, we have to systematically examine the whole eye and ascertain what is um, there in each of the structures of the eye. And after only doing this thoroughly, we have to go ahead with a cataract surgery. More on investigations. General investigation. If somebody asks you, what are the general investigations you will do in a patient? Blood pressure is one. Blood sugar is another. If need be, ECG is another. If ECG will be taken, if the patient has a coronary artery disease, if he is taking heart medicines, etc. And one more point I want to caution you here is, most of these coronary artery patients will be taking aspirin or clopidogrel tablets regularly. This cannot be taken during cataract surgery. Ideally, at least three days before the cataract procedure or if at all five days before the cataract procedure, three to five days before the procedure, this drop, drug has to be stopped and it will be started after three to five days after the procedure. So this can be taken uh, very importantly in patients who are uh, having coronary artery disease. So it is a good habit to send these patients for a cardiologist to opinion. Cardiologist will see the ECG and ascertain whether the patient's uh, cardiac condition is stable. Then also advice regarding stopping of this uh, aspirin or clopidogrel and uh, then you can take up with, for cataract surgery. This kind of, uh, this kind of uh, um, cataract surgery preparation is done in general side. If any of the general investigations are bad, if any of the general investigations are bad, like is risky, is a bit, uh, bit uh, not perfect, then you have to get an anesthetist opinion. Anesthetist opinion and that kind of surgery, that kind of surgery where though you are doing, you, uh, though anesthetist is involved, again, the surgery is done only under, um, and, uh, only under local anesthesia, but it is called MAC. MAC means monitored anesthetic care. The patient is operated under local anesthesia, but an anesthetist will be on standby. His uh, uh, observation of the patient and his uh, monitoring of the patient is very essential especially in patients who have high blood sugar, high blood pressure, or a ECG, which is a borderline, a borderline ECG, similar conditions, a bronchial asthma, a very obese patient. So though uh, there is a common question which says like, what anesthesia, cataract surgery is done, cataract surgery is always done at the local anesthesia, except for uh, children and mentally unstable patients in whom you do it at the general anesthesia, that kind of statement, gets an um, uh, gets a caveat here the caveat is monitored anesthetic care is specially necessary 
for patients who have uh, these kind of general parameters which are bit borderline. So in those situations, you will resort to monitor anesthetic care. Okay. Next, we will come to the ocular investigations. One we have already seen, the vision testing. Then I told you when you are doing a vision testing with a pinhole, you can judge whether the patient is having improvement. And if he is having improvement, then you can try glasses on him. This is the trial set where we do refraction. Can you see the trial frame and the lenses? This is the trial frame and these are the lenses. These are the lenses. So this kind of trial set and trial lenses are used in the patient. These can be, uh, these can be used to, to see whether the patient is improving. If the patient is improving with spectacles uh, considerably in an immature cataract, then the patient can be given the option of uh, delaying the surgery for six months or one year with the glasses. That is an option here. Then needless to say, we even uh, said in corneal ulcer, the five yes, you remember. Similarly, here also yes is very important. Uh, yes is syringing. Syringing is very important in cataract surgery. If there is a dacryocystitis or an NLD obstruction, cataract surgery should be uh, delayed. It should not be proceeded with. Cataract surgery cannot be done with a septic focus nearby it. So what you will do in that situation, you will have to treat the NLD obstruction. You will have to relieve the dacryocystitis, then only take the patient for cataract surgery. So this kind of uh, importance is associated with syringing investigation. What is this? This is keratometry. And with the keratometry, we also do A scan. So we do K reading. We do K reading and A scan. With K and A, we can calculate IOL. IOL power calculation is done with K and A. This kind of power calculation is very important, very important for judging what IOL will suit a particular cataract patient and keeping that IOL ready before surgery is very important. Who will you do B-scan? B-scan is a selective investigation. B-scan is not done for everybody. B-scan is only done in mature cataract patients in whom the posterior segment cannot be seen properly. In those patients only you do a B-scan. Slit lamp examination, 100%. It is done for all cataract patients because you have to judge uh, the anterior segment properly in a slit lamp examination. Fundus examination, very important. This is a direct fundus examination. This is an indirect fundus examination. So this is an indirect ophthalmoscopy. This is a direct ophthalmoscopy. Both direct and indirect ophthalmoscopy are done. Direct and indirect ophthalmoscopy are done uh, to judge the fundus in a cataract patient. Because if the fundus is not going to be all right, if the fundus is going to have a separate disease like diabetic retinopathy or a vitreous hemorrhage or a retinal detachment, then if you don't take uh, recourse for that or treatment for that and proceed with the cataract surgery, then the prognosis is going to be very bad. Even after the cataract surgery, patient's vision is not going to improve. Then the patient is going to complain to you, say that, uh, like I was already seeing well, now after the surgery, I'm not seeing well. If this kind of statement comes from the patient, then it becomes very, very difficult to manage such patients. So it is our uh, very uh, uh, primary role to ascertain the posterior segment health before cataract surgery and um, see to that the posterior segment health is pakka and uh, then only proceed with cataract. This is the uh, famed IOL calculation formula. This is called the SRK2 formula, where P equals A minus 2.5L minus 0.9K. A is a constant. A will be given by the manufacturer for a particular lens material. A particular A constant is given. L is the axial length of the eye. Axial length of the eye is measured from the A scan biometry. If you do a A scan biometry, you can easily measure the axial length of the eye. K is the keratometry. Keratometer reading will give you the K value. K value. So once you get the A, L and K, then you can put it in the formula. Even the machine will do it for you. If you key in these numbers, then it, the formula will be calculated by the A scan machine itself and you will get the power, the power of the IOL, which will be suitable. The mostly the standard power is somewhere around 20, 20, 20.5. 20 these are the standard powers of IOL plus, plus 20. Remember that plus 20 plus 20.5 20 is the standard IOL powers which are uh, used by most of the patients. But uh, if you do an IOL formula uh, calculation, then there will be a minor um, uh, change, like it will be 20.5 for me, 21 or 21.5. And if I do the other eye for myself, then it will be like 21, 21.5. Like the, both the eyes need not be 
symmetrical, like exactly the same. Both eyes can be fit different, at least 0.5 to 1 different. They cannot be widely different. I cannot have uh, plus 20 in my right eye and plus 24 in my left eye. That kind of situation usually will not occur unless there is something very abnormal with my eyes. Usually, both the eyes will be approximately equal with a difference of somewhere around 0.5 to 1. And this power calculation formula is a universally accepted formula. But now with modern requirements that are other formulas like a SRK by T, uh, there is a Hoffer Q, Hoffer Q formula. There is a um, the lot of Barrett's formula. Lot of formulas have come today for calculating IOL power. But even um, till date, this SRK2 formula is a very good regression formula, which is used for IOL power calculation routinely in our hospital. Next, in the management, the decision for surgery has to be made. First, you have to see whether you can avoid surgery. If you want to avoid surgery, what do you do? You do refraction and give a best glass. That can be done in early cataracts. Early cataracts, you can do refraction, give some glasses and ask the patient to come for six months or one year because certain times the patient will have a cardiac condition or patient will have a diabetes which is not uh, treat, uh, tre uh, which is not uh, under control or you can have a septic focus. Something can be like uh, interfering with the surgical uh, uh, nature of the procedure. So then in those situations, then we'll have to like take some time, give him refraction, risk glasses and wait for some time. The next is surgical. Once you have decided surgical, then you'll have to be um, you'll have to be very 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 clear in uh, having a good prognosis following surgery. So you'll have to counsel the patient, tell him all his possibilities, options, and uh, tell about the IOL, tell about the procedure, tell about the natural complications which might occur in these procedures and uh, these things have to be done as a counseling and an informed consent has to be got from the patient patient should sign a form where he will understand that he is going through to go through this procedure and these are the possible complications or uh, inadvertent things might happen certain times you are forced to operate uh, in a in a in a more uh, uh, emergency fashion like when there is a glaucoma we discussed no, in advanced glaucoma when there can be a phacolytic glaucoma or a phacomorphic glaucoma in uh, advanced cataract. In those situations, then uh, you cannot delay anything. You have to go for surgery sooner. If there is a dislocation or subluxation, if there is a retinal disease, certain times there can be retinal disease in a cataract person, then you'll have to tell them that I am going to do cataract surgery first, then I'm going to manage you for the retina disease, then only you will get good vision. Likewise, you have to counsel him to be prepared for treatment for both these individual conditions. Cataract surgery per se will not affect the retinal condition, but the retinal condition will need separate treatment, separate treatment, that kind of ident uh, understanding the patient should have. And certain times, even in a um, totally blind eye, totally blind eye, if there is a dense cataract, it will look very white and uh, odd. The, like everybody who looks at the patient will keep asking him, why is that white object seen in your eye? Are you not seeking any treatment like that? So patients will come to you for cosmetic surgery even, just to remove the cataract, just to make it, uh, make that white uh, object, uh, white uh, structure in the eye to be cleared. And uh, in those situations, uh, cataract surgery is done under uh, zero visual prognosis. There is no visual prognosis here, only for cosmetic reasons, cataract surgery is done. So this is the overview of the investigations and the management plan which you take in a cataract surgery patient.